if you want to know how to get into autophagy faster, then check out this video. I'm gonna tell you how can you activate autophagy faster and do it from less fasting. They do say that it takes about three to five days of fasting to get into autophagy, but that's a matter of context and how fast you go into autophagy depends on many things. What matters is what you're doing before you start a fast, what you're doing during the fast, and what you do after breaking the fast as well. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you how can you get into autophagy faster. Number one, fasted cardio. I do have to say that there isn't much difference between doing cardio in a fit state versus doing it in a fasted one when it comes to fat loss. But exercise performed in a fasted state has been shown to have a higher increase in LC3B2 levels compared with a fit state. LC3B is an autophagy related protein, which suggests that exercise done while fasting has a better autophagic response. This doesn't mean that you have to go run a marathon or do a bunch of cardio in a fasted state. Run! Even walking for like 60 minutes or hiking in nature while fasting is a great way to just speed up the process and go into autophagy faster. Number two, eat keto. Being in ketosis and having autophagy, they aren't mutually inclusive, as you can be in ketosis without autophagy, and you can have autophagy without being in ketosis. It's just that most of the time, those two things tend to work together. Ketosis promotes brain macroautophagy by activating CERT1. Ketone bodies also stimulate chaperone-mediated autophagy, which targets only specific amino acids and substrates. Eating a low-carb, moderate-protein ketogenic diet can help you to go into autophagy faster because you don't have that much glycogen you have to burn through and you're not overeating protein. Someone who is eating a higher-protein ketogenic diet, they will just have to fast a bit longer, but they still may experience going into ketosis and autophagy faster because their carbs are low. The same can apply to a low protein diet that doesn't restrict carbs because the protein is low. So the two things that matter are carbs and protein when it comes to autophagy regulation. Three, calorie restriction pneumatics. There are also different compounds and ingredients that stimulate autophagy and calorie restriction by activating the same metabolic pathways. Coffee activates autophagy because of the caffeine and its polyphenol content. EGCG, the main polyphenol, and green tea also promotes autophagy. Then there's medicinal mushrooms like reishi, chaga, lion's mane, cordyceps, as well as polyphenolic compounds like resveratrol, terostilbean, and others. The most potent calorie restriction mimetics are probably rapamycin, berberine, ginger, turmeric, and ginseng. Number four, heat stress and cold. Heat shock proteins get released under inflammation, heat stress, starvation, hypoxia, or even water deprivation. They help to protect against cell damage and repair damaged proteins like autophagy. Hormetic heat stress and heat shock factor 1 induce autophagy to improve survival and proteostasis in C. elegans. Hot and cold exposure increase neuronal autophagy and can be used to treat neurodegenerative disease. Number 5. Apple cider vinegar while fasting. Apple cider vinegar can be considered another calorie restriction mimetic because it does promote ketosis and it suppresses insulin, lowers your blood sugar and essentially it also raises AMPK which is the fuel sensor that activates autophagy. If you drink some apple cider vinegar in a fasted state, then that will promote digestion, it improves your liver health, and uh, promotes ketosis as well. The liver is the central ground where all of the nutrient signaling takes place, which is why a fatty or dysfunctional liver will probably take a longer time to get into autophagy as well as ketosis. Number six, hit cardio. If you deplete your level glycogen with fasting and exercise, you're going to start producing ketones and accelerate autophagy. Exercise mimics fasting, and fasting mimics exercise by stimulating the same pathways. Just 30 minutes of cardio has been shown to induce autophagy zone formation. Doing HIT probably requires less time because high intensity exercise burns a lot more glycogen than steady state cardio. Get to the chopper! Number 7. Have more muscle. Common sense would say that autophagy promotes muscle wasting and sarcopenia because of breaking down proteins. However, research shows that autophagy actually maintains muscle and protects against age-related muscle dysfunction. Having more muscle mass can help you to be more metabolically flexible and go into autophagy faster because you burn more calories at rest and your body is also more insulin sensitive. Chronic resistance training has been shown to activate autophagy and reduce apoptosis of muscle cells. The goal of fasting shouldn't be to fast as long as possible because that will inevitably eventually lead to some nutrient deficiencies and muscle loss. The goal of fasting should be to gain the therapeutic and metabolic benefits of fasting faster and you don't have to fast that long. That's why following these tricks is very useful for getting into autophagy faster so you don't have to fast that long. 
If you want to know how to optimize and deconstruct all of these fasting routines, including resistance training, extended fasts, food combining, and meal timing, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.